He goes to bed at night thinking of Peter the Great and he wakes up thinking of Stalin. We need to understand who he is and what he wants. It may not fit with what we believe of the 21st century, but that's not who he is and that's not what he's trying to accomplish. We need to be a little bit tougher with, this, uh, with Putin or he is going to continue uh, to take territory to fulfill what he believes is rightfully Russia. Welcome back to the update. We're shifting to Ukraine for this week's Missing the Mark. I know we've talked a lot about Ukraine lately, like really almost too much. But look, Mike Rogers says it. Putin is essentially Stalin the Great. And what does the current Ukrainian president have to say about such concerns? Frankly speaking, I don't care about Russia. Let him finish. Frankly speaking, I don't care about Russia signing this deal. I care about Ukraine, Ukrainians, and our European future. This deal covers most existential and most important issues, mainly security and defense cooperation. This deal will establish a joint decision-making body, which is to facilitate the process of real reforms in my country. Of course, not everybody agrees about not caring about Russia signing the deals. Former heavyweight boxing champion and current Ukrainian presidential candidate Vitaly Klitschko weighs in. The main goal uh, of Russia is not Crimea. It's not Kharkiv region, not Donetsk region or not Lugansk region. The main goal is capital of Ukraine, the Kyiv and control whole Ukraine. Because we know and we listen a lot about that, the idea from Russians to rebuild Russia empire without Ukraine is impossible to do it. Russia's looking for the knockout punch. And as we've seen from that Rocky movie, I'm too lazy to remember. Which one's the one with the uh, Russian and the American? This can only lead to a final fight. We, we have two types of response. The first one is military, which is not really acceptable for the world to have the third world war. The second one is political, diplomatic and economic. The best way to contain Russia is to impose real economic leverage. Can we at least get the training montage part of it where it looks like there's going to be a fight? to make from Crimea demilitarized zone. No military forces anymore. Okay, obviously, the US, like Ukraine, doesn't want an actual war with Russia. It's really expensive, and also, if you heard from Ukraine's big players in this, they calmly discuss the country's options without World War II references. And now for the US. They harbor uh, uh, Edward Snowden. All, all these things are designed to say, hey, look, we're pushing against the United States. They took over uh, Crimea. You see that they've taken over another base yet today. And it certainly appears by everything that Ukrainian intelligence officials believe, certainly U.S. intelligence officials believe, that Putin is not done. In but in the face of rhetoric from American leaders that makes Russia out to be the new axis of evil, it seems like that's the only logical solution. However... And what we'll see him do this week is bring the world together in support of Ukraine, uh, to isolate Russia for its actions in Ukraine, and to reassure our partners and allies uh, in NATO and in Europe. Just today, Russia got kicked out of the G8, and they're still supposed to try and take over another country. Maybe not the superpower we're thinking of. So, maybe not the best idea to assume Russia's an unstoppable machine. Money talks, and it says gearing up for war misses the mark. Coming up, I talk about the student government election. Does it make a difference for the student body? That's going to be up to the winning ticket's relationship with LSU students. Keep your relationship good with me by staying tuned. Roll the commercials.